this is our next day of our study of Joshua. So as you remember, God chose Joshua to take Moses' place. Moses has died and um, he has, um, the whole um, Israelite camp has been mourning his death and yet Joshua has proven himself to be ready for this new position. God has been preparing him. So we're gonna talk about the fact that the book of Joshua is a book about battles and war and military genius. In fact, it is often called the book of conquest. Um, Joshua, who's a true man, it's a true story, everything in the Bible is true, is ranked up there with the military geniuses of history like um, Caesar, Hannibal, Napoleon. You might have heard of some of these famous men, military geniuses. If you haven't, you will one day. So God gave the command to be strong and courageous. I'm going to share my screen and let you see my um, PowerPoint. <clears throat> God gave the command to be strong and courageous and brave promising them that everything they saw he would give them just as i promised your ancestors you shall conquer all the land this kind of courage does not come from a determination to be bold it cannot be pumped up wished for or forced from within it is the result of faith of our believing the promises that God has given us and obeying. He had already given it to them, in fact, and it was time for them to claim it. The land of Canaan had seven heathen nations living in it. And this is the land that God over 400 years before had promised to Abraham. The Canaanites were idol worshipers and along with their worship of false gods they committed the most horrible wicked and evil practices that one could ever imagine because god is a righteous god he cannot allow sin to go unpunished so god commanded joshua to conquer and destroy those seven evil nations because of their wickedness the time had now come for Joshua to lead the people over the Jordan River. It was a very active river, hard, um, tor tur it was turbulent. It was the time of year that it would have been. There were no bridges, there were no boats. And, but God said, you're gonna go. It seems difficult and um, almost impossible. And I think God liked it always to look impossible. So they had to trust him. The job of conquering these nations seemed impossible. But Joshua remembered the wonderful promises God had given to him and to all the people of Israel. And he determined that he would trust God totally for victory. On the other side of the Jordan, see, I want to go back. On the other side of the Jordan, as you can see, there is the city of Jericho with tall, strong walls, very different than the tents that the Israelites have been living in. It must have looked like the Marriott Hotel. It was so gigantic and, and beautiful. But Joshua knew that they were going to have to defeat this city before they could get any further into the promised land. So immediately, it was going to be a test of power and trust. Therefore, he sent two spies, two men that he wanted to secretly spy and explore the land. He talked to them and said, I need you to go over and I need you to trust God and I need you to bring back all the information that will help us. And then he went to his own people and he said, Whatever happens, God is going to give us this land. 
spend 40 long, dreary years, and the people began to finally celebrate. They were so excited. Finally, the day had come. Whatever you command us, we will do, the people said. And whenever you send us and wherever we go, we will, we will trust you. The people were told to gather their belongings and prepare food for the march. Well, the two spies crossed the river and entered the gates of Jericho. They found houses built all along on top of the city wall. The two spies had no idea that Jericho's walls were so thick that houses could actually be built on top of the walls. This was certainly a well-fortified city. And the city was filled with people, many of whom lived on top of the wall. It would be very hard for anyone to destroy these walls. The spies knew they needed to be, to be very careful and not let anyone suspect them of being spies from Israel. They quickly moved in and out among the people and made their way up on the wall to see how thick those walls really were. The spies went into a house on the wall and started talking to a woman named Rahab. There they found the protection as they spied out the land that they needed. In the meantime, someone saw the men go to her house and hurried to report it to the king. Two men from the Israelite camp had come to spy on our city. The king knew that if these men were spies, he dared not let them go back to their own camp. So he immediately sent officers to Rahab's house to arrest them. Suddenly, inside the house, Rahab and the spies heard heavy footsteps coming up the steps and loud, determined voices approaching the door. To the roof, Rahab cried. The two spies fled up a ladder to the roof as fast as they could go. Rahab, following them, said, lay down, lay down quickly. She began covering them with stalks of flax that she had spread on the roof to dry. She told them to be quiet and to not make a stir. Then she climbed down the ladder and calmly went to the door where the soldiers were. In the king's name, they cried. You must surrender the men who have come to you, for they are spies. They have been sent by the leaders of Israel to search out all of our country so they can find the best way to attack us. It is true, Rahab replied to the soldier. The men were here earlier, but I, I didn't know they were spies. A little while ago, before the city gates were closed, they left. And I can probably... Think, I think you could catch up with them if you hurry. Without searching the house any further, the king's officers hurried away. It never dawned on them that one of their own people would protect the spies from um, Israel. Since the city gates were now locked, this meant that the two spies were trapped in Jericho and they would not be able to go back to their camp. After the soldiers left, Rahab went back up to the roof and removed the stalks of flax. And she brought the two spies out and she took them back into her home and hid them again. I know perfectly well that your God is going to give your people to my city and my country, she told them. But you know, we're all afraid of you. We heard about how God dried up the Red Sea and made a path for you when you left Egypt. And we've heard he gave you the power to destroy the armies of Sihon and Og, the kings of the Amorites. All of our people are afraid of you. There's been nothing but fear left in any of our people after hearing these things. I want you to know that um, we, that um, I, believe your God is the one true God of heaven and of earth below. Now Rahab was a wicked woman. The Bible calls her a harlot, which is a very immoral woman. She was also in worship of idols. All of her life she had told lies and lived in an evil way. To her, that was like everyone around her. So she thought she was just regular like everyone. But often in her life, she had wished 
that she could live a pure, clean life. Her conscience often bothered her and she longed to live differently, but she didn't know how. Ever since she had heard about the God of Israel, she had wondered if he were not the true God. And now meeting these two spies and seeing that they seemed different, she was convinced that God was the true God. She was willing to risk her life on that belief. Thus Rahab became a true believer in the living God of Israel. She said to the spies, I believe that your God is the true God and that our idols are false. And because I believe that your God is the true one, I am willing to hide you from the king. Well, the two men promised they would spare her life. He, they said, if you will not betray us and if you help us to escape, we will see to it that, we, um, that after we conquer Jericho, that we will spare you. We will see to it that your family is not harmed either. Rahab then told the sky, spies that since the house was on top of the city wall, she could help them escape out her window and down the wall by dropping a scarlet rope. Now, scarlet is the color red. The men said to her, when we come back to conquer Jericho, we cannot be responsible for what happens to you unless this scarlet cord is hanging from the window and then we will know, we will know which house we should save. If any of your family should go into the street or leave this house, we are not to blame. And he is to blame for not being under the protection of that sign. If you think about that reminds me of the blood of the lamb that was put over the house door tops during um, the Passover. Now we have the spy saying, leave the silken scarlet cord. Now Rahab was a wicked woman. The Bible tells us that um, she really was a sinner and yet God was about to protect her. And so from the upstairs window, on the top of the wall, in the dead of the night, Rahab let the spies down outside of the city wall by a red or scarlet rope. Escape to the mountains, she told them. Hide there for three days until the men who are searching for you have returned. Then go on your way. The spies climbed down the rope and jumped the rest of the way to the ground. Rahab pulled the scarlet rope back into her house and tied it near the window to use later. This must have been something she thought about. She must have kept looking at that and marveling. Can it be? Can it be that God would care to protect me? She believed the men. And she believed just something that God had put in her heart to trust him. This is an amazing example that God put in his true word of people who do not deserve to be God's people. They are sinners. They are liars. Um, that song we sing, six things, even seven that the Lord hates. They do all those things. And maybe you do too. But God shows us in his word that if we trust him, then he, he provides a way of forgiveness and a way of escape. So the spies are going to escape, and so is Rahab. That's all for today.